chiedo va la pena di restare qui abbracciati mentre il giorno non c'è più e la luna da lassù fa da specchio ai nostri baci Hello, buongiorno from Italy, the country that gave us the Romans, pizza, Pavarotti and la dolce vita. But beyond the easy stereotypes, this is a country that is a heavyweight in Europe. Italy was a founder member of the EU and of the Euro. Today, it's the third biggest Eurozone economy and a country in a certain degree of political and economic flux. In 2018, a general election brought two populist forces into an uneasy coalition together, the rather indefinable Five Star Movement and the right-wing Lega Party. In our programme, we're going to be looking into some of the issues and news stories that most matter to Italians today. We're starting right here in Genoa, the scene of the event that perhaps most marked Italy in 2018, a catastrophic bridge collapse that caused the deaths of 43 people and left Genoans scarred to this day. Take a listen. When the bridge collapsed, a whole part of our lives disappeared. I've lost my home, and my life will never be the same again. It used to be jam-packed here, but since the bridge collapsed, nobody comes by anymore. We've lost 70% of our customers. The plan is for the new bridge to be nearly finished by the end of 2019. Vehicles won't be able to use it yet, but at least we'll see it. We want to determine exactly what maintenance works were carried out, whether they were done or not, if the maintenance was not carried out properly, and why we got to 2018 without any important works to consolidate the structure. Well, we've come into the city centre now to meet a Genoa native, an MEP with the Five Star Movement, which got the single biggest vote share in the 2018 general election, almost 33% overall. Very nice to meet you, Tiziana Begin. Hi. Hello. Hello. I'd like to talk first about, of course, the bridge collapse uh, in 2018. It was such a devastating event. What's been the impact on this city and its people? Well, for sure, the, the most important impact was the death of more than 40 people. And uh, after that, uh, we had uh, a bad impact on people uh, living around the bridge. Your leader, Luigi Di Maio, said afterwards that Italy's bridges, motorways, infrastructure should be nationalised to avoid this kind of thing happening. Is that a, a concrete plan for your movement? For sure, we have a state owned patrimony that has been given to companies in order to manage that without a very big result for citizens. So we are ready to have it again in our possibility to manage and to give them to citizens in the right and proper way, safe and cheaper also. This idea of nationalisation, though, it has set up a bit of a clash with the leader of the other half of the coalition, Matteo Salvini of the Lega. He says he's against nationalisation. For sure there will be a, a debate about that, but I'm not sure that Mr Salvini will be against this uh, position. OK, well, while we're talking about uh, possible disagreements in the coalition, I've got a report now uh, that I want to show our viewers about one major policy area for the Five Star Movement. The idea is called a citizen's wage. Anais Guerra has been down in Rome in the surrounding area finding out a bit more. They call it the citizen's income, aimed at the 7% of households living in poverty. The measure will cost 7 billion euros this year. This father who gets by on odd jobs is already receiving state aid of 485 euros a month, put into place by Italy's previous government. In April, he'll be eligible for the citizen's income, a greater amount of aid, but one that also requires him to put in community service. I'm waiting for the state to call, to give me a job. That way, in a five or six day week, they'll have me do three or four hours of work a day. I'll receive more aid, I'll have 780 euros a month, and that'll help the family. 
They'll also pay my pension contributions since I'm getting close to retirement age. The reform is less popular in the business world, where it's seen as discouraging job mobility. Look, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bad news because uh, um, in Italy, the median income for uh, someone under 30 years old uh, with no university degree is less than 800 euros. So basically, the initial salary is the same amount of the universal income. The government's other key measure, lowering the retirement age from 66 to 62. It'll come at a cost of 3.9 billion euros in 2019 and 8.6 billion next year, an investment that's left some experts scratching their heads. Life expectancy is going up, so it's very logical to want to increase the retirement age, not decrease it. Especially because future generations will be the ones left to get Italy's budget in order. Critics say the reform is less about the economy than it is about courting votes. Either way, Italy is on track for a 2.04% budget deficit this year, a concession to the European Union. The government still faces a tough balancing act, expanding social welfare, while at the same time respecting the EU's rules that limit state spending. Well, Tiziana Beghini, we've just seen that report there about the citizens' wage. The European Commission, however, thinks that with the budget overall, the Five Star Movement and the Lega could be about to crash the Italian economy. We think that giving a chance to people going out from their poverty situation, and we are talking about more than six million people, uh, it will be a way to boost the economy. On a day-to-day -day level, there are questions about Five Star's ability to govern. There have been protests in Rome, for example, where there's a Five Star mayor, uh, people complaining about a garbage crisis, wild boar in the streets. Uh, Rome is not a, uh, an easy town to be administrated, and uh, Virginia Raggi found so a disaster and started to manage uh, with a lot of problems, but also uh, achieved important goals. A lot of those people are saying our city might have been difficult before, but it was working better. I'm not sure that is the reality. We had some important uh, things that we had, for example, the approval of the budget in time, the first time that we had, and the fight against corruption and mafia. Well, Five Star is a very young movement. Your coalition partner, Lega, is a party that's existed for much longer. Yeah. The party's seen as moving ahead of the Five Star movement in the polls. Is the Five Star movement perhaps being used as a vehicle by the Lega? I don't think so. For sure, they had an opportunity to go to the government, the government that they couldn't have uh, without us. But uh, we couldn't do it alone. The movement's position on Europe seems to have changed quite drastically in its short lifetime. Uh, pro and anti-Euro. What is the Five Stars position? You're in a group with the UK Independence Party currently. We strongly believe in Europe and uh, we are not crazy. Uh, uh, we know that Europe needs to be reformed, but now it is impossible to uh, simply quit it. All right, well, Tiziana Begin, thank you very much for talking to, to us. you. Thank you. It was a pleasure for me. Come now to the northern city of Piacenza to meet an MEP from the other party in the ruling government coalition from the Lega, Marco Zanni. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bonjour. There is quite the clash currently with the European Commission, to put it lightly. Is your government really being realistic? We need the government and the budget to sustain the economy in an adverse economic cycle. And that's the proposal of the Italian government. So I think has been very realistic in, in assessing the real situation. Other members of the Eurozone worried, though, that Italy could be about to cause another Eurozone crisis? I don't think so. Uh, looking at the macroeconomic indicators, we are one of the best economies in the EU. And also the European Commission, in uh, its assessment during the years, uh, is saying that the Italian debt on the long term, in the long term is one of the more sustainable in the European Union. 
there are some inconsistencies between Lega policies and Cinque Stelle policies. Can the coalition really hold? Yeah, I think that it can, it can hold uh, in the next years because uh, it's true that we have differences, for example, on some infrastructures, for example, on the minimum income, and then we are focusing on, on what we have in common or what we agreed. So maybe it is not the best way for us, but uh, it's, it's uh, right in our view to respect uh, what the Italian citizens voted in March. So well, I'd like to take a closer look uh, with the viewers at your party now. The Lega used to be a regional force based heavily in the north and scoring just 4% a decade or so ago. It was known for deriding the southern half of Italy. Now, though, it is a national force. Its popularity riding very much on the popularity of its leader, Matteo Salvini. Luke Brown tells us more. Meraviglioso, meraviglioso. Tanta roba. Mattia has travelled from Milan to Rome to see his political idol, Matteo Salvini. The past year has seen the Lega Party enter government, vindication for these grassroots activists. Compared to previous years, the square is fuller and busier. It means Matteo Salvini's league is really working well. Mattia is in Rome with Valentina and Christian, two fellow members of the Lega. Their admiration for the leader who brought the party to power is clear. Politics needed people like Matteo, simple, straightforward people who don't just stay in the palaces of power, who come down to the streets and understand the people's needs. Back in Milan, the young trio discuss the rally. They already have 21 years of political activism between them. In the five years since Salvini took control, the Lega has changed from a regional party to a national movement. The success of La Liga is thanks to him. People believe in him and the Liga's ideals. All he's done is amplify and export the Liga's ideals for all of Italy. Salvini's success is credited to his common touch. His 3.5 million Facebook followers get updates on his government work and pictures of his dinner. But his brand of populism needs an adversary, ranging from migrants to the EU. For Alessandro Madron, who's written a biography of Salvini, his antagonistic stance is also a vote winner. Fundamentally, he behaves like a bully. That's just his way of doing things. There's always a strategy behind Salvini's actions, even though there's a risk of being punished by the EU. He's hoping to ride this wave and he's aiming for the European elections. The Lega has surged not just at a national level, but also locally. In Cinecello Balsamo, Giacomo Gelardi rode the Salvini wave to become mayor. The Lega's Italian's first slogan ended 70 years of left-wing governance. Like Matteo Salvini does at a national level, I aim to be in close contact with people. We're not racist or xenophobes. People say that we're populists. If that means looking after the people, our own people, then I'm proud to be a populist. The Lega's national success is tied to Italy's economic woes. In neighbouring Sesto San Giovanni, these vast steelworks have lain dormant for over a decade. 45,000 people used to work here. Pier Francesco Aragoni spent his career in the left-wing trade unions. His old comrades have been wooed by the Lega's populism. Perché la sinistra non... Well, the left failed to represent this part of society. The working class feels abandoned. Italy's traditional parties have had no answer to Salvini's populism. The Lega leader has capitalized on years of anger and outmaneuvered the establishment. I think that this man is a jackass, but he's very intelligent and he has good instincts. He succeeded in doing something that no one thought possible. The next test could have even wider consequences. Salvini wants to spearhead a populist alliance ahead of this year's European elections. Well, we've come to one of the main shopping streets now in Piacenza, uh, still with Marco Zanni. Uh, Matteo Salvini has faced a lot of criticism from within Italy and outside, particularly for his rhetoric about migrants. Um, in the two months after the election in 2018, there were actually more racist attacks in Italy than in the whole of 2016 on Italian police figures. Um, many people say that he encouraged 
racism in Italy. He is not uh, saying uh, uh, every French people should leave Italy. He is just asking for uh, clarity and for um, illegal immigrants to stay out of Italy. We are happy to, to welcome people coming from wars or from difficult situations. But what about the issue of the humanitarian visas that have no longer exist in Italy? That's not welcoming to yeah, migrants. Yeah, because the humanitarian visa, according to the data, were used to uh, welcome in Italy and to agree the entrance in Italy uh, to of people that are not uh, coming from uh, humanitarian uh, or from, from difficult situations. One other big headline issue for the Lega, a party that sees itself as being anti-corruption but is embroiled in corruption scandals. Uh, there's one, for example, where the party was ordered to repay 48 million euros of election campaign funding. Yeah, it's, it's not a corruption case, it's a misusing, a misspending of public funds, so it's not related to corruption. And the party so it's accepts a different that? Thing. The party uh, say that uh, um, the, um, all the investigations that are going on, we, we are respecting what, what the judge and, and investigation are, are trying to assess, but it's a responsibility of the past leaders of the party, of Mr. Bossi, mm -hmm. of Mr. Maroni and Mr. Uh, Belsito. As, the, as the inheritors they... of that situation, will the party under Salvini repay that money? Uh, we are just supporting uh, um, the uh, investigation. Every people in Italy, every citizens in Italy, can assess uh, how the league is using public money for its political activity. Well, please do stay with us for part two of the programme. We will be back in Genoa. We're going to be speaking to a member of the opposition, Partito Democratico. We'll also be meeting some young Italians to find out what they think their future holds. Because a new page of history gets written every day. Because breaking news can't wait. Information everywhere. In all situations. On every subject. Understanding the world. Imagining the world. France 24. A different take on the news.